rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. As our sister Diane has died with the Lord, so may she live with him in glory. Behold our God, whom we look to save us. 
This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. The word of the Lord. Christ Jesus who died, 
rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No, in all these we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor present things nor future things nor power nor height nor depth nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord.
two key experiences of our relationship with God. Forgiveness is one of those things. We are baptized, and in that baptism, all the sins of the one being baptized are washed away. The forgiveness that God offers to us is freely given. We did not need to earn it, and we are called to do the same for others. It is the first experience we have of the Lord, that forgiveness that he desires to show us. For many of us, that is the way it is. In my experience with Diane, she was willing to be honest, but had a willingness to forgive as well. Our Lord continually called us to forgive and to remember that we have been forgiven. Forgiveness is a very important part of our life as a Catholic. More than half of our sacraments forgive sins. The fundamental prayer of our faith asks God to forgive us as we forgive others. It is one of the most fundamental aspects of our faith. We are called to forgive and are in need of forgiveness. It is what leads us to imitate the Father to imitate God himself, to do what the Lord asked us to do in following after him, to forgive. The other experience, which is closely tied to forgiveness, is love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Or from Father Kapachuk's choice of his second reading last yesterday, we love because he first loved us. Nothing can separate us from the love of God, as we heard in our second reading. God is love. That is the fundamental understanding we must come to know and to experience in our lives. God is love. Diane tried to express that love to others. She did so with students and parishioners by writing cards and letters for them and sending them to them. She had more, she had more than once written a letter to an archbishop or to a couple of archbishops expressing either acknowledgement of the blessedness that was happening or some concern with what was going on. After I was assigned, it might have been eight months to a year, Archbishop Jacobs made mention of a number of letters he had received both prior to my coming and after that were sent by Diane. He didn't necessarily tell me what the subject matter of those letters were, but he did mention that the frequency of those letters had declined, so. <laughs> she didn't do this out of spite, but out of love. She did it out of love, not only for the priests and for the faith, but she did it out of love for the parishioners. She did it out of love, desiring what was best for them. She wanted something for herself, but because she loved all the parishioners and wanted what was best for them, she wrote those letters. She constantly showed that to those who received those letters when they were abroad or whether they were at college or starting their, their careers or whatever it was, whatever, if it was a loss of a loved one or or just some particular thing that was happening in their life. She showed her affection. She showed how God poured love into her, and that love compelled her and, it, and allowed it to be expressed in those letters sent to others. We cannot be separated from God's love, for it is that love that holds us in existence. It is also that love that is encouraging us to turn back to the Father and to respond positively to the love that he is giving to us. Diane showed that love to others through mentoring them, writing letters, and praying for them. We too can show that love for others. It is the love of God being poured into us that can inspire us to show that love to others. That was what it was for Diane. She showed that love continually to those in her life. These two spiritual insights go hand in hand. We cannot love without forgiveness, and we cannot forgive if we do not love. Loving and forgiving are you, O Lord. 
May we deepen our bonds of love with, the, with our Lord and learn from Him how to forgive. Then, when it is our time to make that faithful journey at the end of our pilgrimage through life, we may be joined to those who also have been perfected in love and forgiveness, just as Diane was throughout her life. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ, his Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all his people. <laughs> to Diane, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that she now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our sister Diane was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome her into the halls of the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of Diane, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord of compassion and the giver of consolation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our departed relatives and friends, we pray especially for Diane's parents, John and Edna, and they welcome her with Christ to their everlasting home in the kingdom of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for Diane, strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your Son's coming. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for Diane and all our departed brothers and sisters. Forgive the sins of all who are in Christ, and grant them a place in the heavenly kingdom, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Number 680, Amazing Grace, verses 1, 2, 4, and 5.
offering to your servant Diane, on whose funeral day we offer you this sacrifice of conciliation, so that should any stain of sin have clung to her, or any fault have affected her, it may by your loving gift be forgiven and wiped away through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed res resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Gwenchus also with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith the charity of your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, and Thomas our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Diana, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who is united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall delight you for all the ages, and praise you without end, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, Lord God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Behold the Lamb of God, and behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. The Number 782, Taste and See. For those not receiving communion, you need to remain in your pew. Come forward with your arms crossed for a blessing. <laughs>
woman to serve on that board. She was larger than life. Tall and outgoing and always stopping to say hello and ask how you were, no matter how busy she was. I remember one fall day in 1985, my senior year in high school, I was summoned to the office. And when I arrived there, I found I had a delivery. It was a single beautiful rose and the card read simply, congratulations from a fellow Allstater. It was signed by Diane Pazza. I had just been accepted into the Iowa Allstate Choir and I never forgot that kind deed from her all those years ago. 
Many of you may not know that Diane played cello in the Iowa State Orchestra when she was in high school. Her first of many acts of kindness toward me all those years ago was just one example of what so many of you in the community have experienced as well. How many of you have received her kind notes of encouragement or praise or congratulations accompanied by a newspaper article that she had cut out in recognition of your accomplishments? And oftentimes, it was even supplemented with her lucky $2 bills. <laughs> this was who she was, a servant both in her community, but also with love to others. Having a servant's heart isn't about achieving recognition or earthly rewards, although she did that too. But it's about following the example of Jesus, serving others as he did, and reflecting his love in our actions. It's about seeing every act of service, no matter how small, is an opportunity to glorify God and bless others. And this she did throughout her life. Little did I know back in 1985 that I would have another impactful encounter with Diane several years later in the spring of 1992. I attended a wedding of a classmate and Diane was present there as well. And in her usual fashion, she asked me how I was and what I was doing. And I told her that I was in nursing school at the University of Iowa. Well, wouldn't you know that Mark was in Iowa City at that time, too. And she proceeded to give me his phone number. <laughs> you can imagine what was going through my mind. I am not going to call Mark Pazza, but when you think of that, his first thought probably would be, how did you get my number? <laughs> extroverted like Diane, so this is not something I would be inclined to do. Well, for whatever reason, I did pick up the phone weeks later and called him, and here we are. You know the rest of the story. Now, I do not believe in luck or even fate. I believe everything happens for a reason as part of God's plan. And I do believe Diane was sent that day by God to give me Mark's phone number, and I have been blessed to be a part of this family. Of I thank God every day for the wonderful parents that Diane and Kenny were. As I know, what a great son they raised. I probably never told Diane that enough. Even though there were times she would give Mark that look and still say, Mark Ryan, I didn't teach you that. <laughs> Usually when he was having an adult beverage or two. <laughs> evidenced by the three great children here with him today and their families by their side. <clears throat> I've also witnessed the love and devotion these two have shared over the past 63 years. Yeah. Something that I definitely want to emulate as a spouse. Kenny was with Diane every day at the nursing home these past couple months, sharing supper with her and never leaving her side until he knew she was settled, calm, and comfortable for the evening. I even walked in her room on Valentine's Day and there were Diane's favorite red carnations at her bedside from her sweetheart. Thank you, Kenny, for being that wonderful example for all of us. 1 Peter 4.10 says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. God has blessed each of us with unique gifts. And he intends for us to use those gifts to serve others. If I learned anything from Diane, it was that serving with a genuine heart is a reflection of faithful stewardship of God's grace. <clears throat> Sometimes the only opportunity others may have to know Christ is by the love that we show towards them. I think we can all honor her memory by acknowledging God's abundant blessings and responding with gratitude by serving others just as she did. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. For those of you who don't know, I'm the proud middle son of Ken and Diane Potts. Uh, Dad 
sister Patricia, and Kent gave me permission to maybe say a few words what mom would say for all of us here. First of all, she'd start out with appreciation. And in saying that, she would thank the Concord Nursing Home for their fine work they did. They have a very difficult job, and they did it with dignity and a, a very positive attitude. She would have singled out a few people in particular, and I know there's many here that we won't mention, but one of them was Doris Dahlman Hudson. Her niece, she stood by mom, helped mom out, out a lot uh, before she went to the nursing home and afterwards. Uh, here at the church, Tiana did an excellent job. How she was such a proud lector here at this, oh, at this church. She was proud of you. She would have been proud of you. Father, who's been the altar girl? Excellent job. Great service, Father. <laughs> Respecting what she said, the character she was. The choir, how she loved being in the choir. Mary Kapachik, Roger Kapachik, Louis Sarasik, all you guys up there. Tony Yurik, you sound like angels up there. She would have thanked you and been so proud of you. Last but not least, everyone here, and people that are not here, the people that have prayed for, sent the nice text message, messages to all of us. She would have really, really appreciated that. Mom, last Saturday, she would have wanted us to celebrate her life. She took her last breath last Saturday about noon, but she also took her first breath in eternal heaven. She got to meet our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, and a lot more friends up there, too. So let's not be selfish. Let's celebrate her life. A few little words that I wanted to just say that maybe summed up her life maybe is uh, in the end it is not the years in your life that counts it's the life in your years I'll say that again because mom used to repeat a lot of things to dad <laughs> Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Diane, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Diane again and enjoy her friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ.